The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, To the cup, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, children, grades two and under, you may go to children's time now. Well, good morning. As I, before I begin, I have an observation and I have a question. The observation is for you, Andrew. I, this is my second service, and uh, at the beginning, you made an announcement about a youth gathering that is after church, and you used the term friendly kickball game. <laughs> now, I played kickball in elementary school, and I do not remember a friendly, at least it didn't end that way, right? Aspirational. Aspiration, a friendly kickball game. And then the question that I have, I will tell you, I've had this question since the second that I walked in this building this morning, all the way through the first service, all the way through the adult formation hour right now until I get to ask it, I have a question. So I came in and I saw all of your baskets that are out here that are gonna be raffled off as part of the bazaar, right? I need to know, I need to know in the Taylor Swift basket, are there tickets? <laughs> no? That was worth $25, I'm telling you, if the answer was yes, I was all in. I was actually in Indianapolis last weekend for a concert, and everybody's talking about the Taylor concert that's coming up here in a week. I was like, I could be there. No, okay, we're good. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I will tell you that I have been looking forward to spending this morning with you for several weeks, ever since uh, Pastor June and uh, Andrew extended the invitation to me. I participate in a weekly uh, Bible study, text study with them, with Nancy Trimble, with other pastors. Um, I will tell you that it's very intimidating to be part of that group. One of the slides that you had as you came in this morning that was doing announcements that was talking about your 945 faith formation class, in big giant letters it said, I have questions, right? Every time that I go to that text study, I am sure that I have a tattoo on my forehead that says, I have questions. I mean, they, they study the Greek. And I mean, like, get in, I have so many questions whenever I go, but it is an awesome time, and I so appreciate being part of that group. I also, in my role as mission liaison to GraceWorks, I very much appreciate the opportunity to come into congregations and talk about how the ministries of the church and of social ministry organizations like GraceWorks Lutheran Services, how those ministries complement one another. 
In today's very complex world, we know that ministry happens in a lot of different settings. GraceWorks is affiliated with the ELCA and by nature is a, a extension of the ministries that happen at local congregations, of the ministry that happens here at Abiding Christ. And I'm going to reflect just a little bit this morning on how that connection happens. I know that whenever you came in this morning, you were given a handout that gives you some of the background information for GraceWorks. If you are watching online, you can actually go to uh, graceworks.org and find out a little bit more about the organization as well. This morning, as I make my comments and I make those connections, I'm going to do so using as my framework one of the songs that we are going to sing this morning. As I was looking at the order of worship today, the song that will come after communion caught my attention. Will You Let Me Be Your Servant is a song that I was not familiar with. I am a certified lay speaker in the Methodist Church. I get to hang, I tell people that by day I hang out with Lutherans. Sometimes on the weekends I hang out with Lutherans. A lot of times I hang out with the Methodists. I'm just covering my bases, is what I'm doing. <laughs> but in the United Methodist Church, we do not sing this song as often we will. It was awesome. The, the words to that song, that song is also called the Servant Song, and it was written by a man named Richard Gillard. And as I went and I looked it up, there was a person who had made some comments about that song. And this is what the person said. They said that the song is a beautiful expression of the Christian call to community and friendship, marked by selfless service, a walking alongside, and the bearing of one another's joys, sorrows, and fears. That description sums up accurately what we as Christians are called to do. We are not called to worry about whether or not we are the greatest or greater than someone else. Jesus reminded his disciples of that. Rather, we are called to selfless service. That, stop, that song starts by asking, will you let me be your servant, be as Christ to you? As I thought about those lyrics, I thought of your congregation's ministries as part of Faith Promise out of Xenia and the Fairborn Fish Pantry. I think of the people served through those ministries and I can imagine how hard it is for mothers and fathers to ask for help in feeding their families. I can imagine how hard it must be for someone to say, I have nowhere to sleep tonight. Your work in those ministries reflects your willingness to say, I know you're in a tough spot right now. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you? On the website for Family Promise, I read part of their vision, which states, we are passionate about working together to create a stronger community, one that embraces people for who they are, for what they've overcome, and for who they want to be. On your handout, you can read about GraceWorks Enhanced Living, uh, where we offer programs and services to individuals living with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We do that in 44 group homes, two day programs, one in Dayton and one in Cincinnati, and in an emergency shelter located in Inglewood. We are constantly striving to embrace people for who they are for what they've overcome, and for what they want to be. Participants in our Cincinnati Day program are also involved in food ministries, just like your congregation is. Two of our staff members saw a need and helped create a food pantry at a local consignment store that's down by the Cincinnati Day program. Each month, they, the staff, and a group of our residents go to that consignment store and help to replenish the food pantry for people in need. That same day program in Cincinnati has partnered with Zion Lutheran Church in Hamilton and have been uh, preparing for over a year meals once a month to help feed the hungry in Hamilton. Greg, that's going to be my first slide, if you will, please. Once a month, participants in the day program go to Zion to pack bags of food, which are then distributed to the community. The church then provides lunch 
for those participants, for those volunteers, and there is a time of worship that happens afterwards. That connection has been very beneficial to all participants who are seeking ways to be as Christ to those in need. The second verse of the servant song reads, we are pilgrims on the journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. As I read this verse, I thought of the morning prayer service that you offer on Tuesdays, where you encourage people to pray, be rooted, and leave centered. I also thought about the Zumba classes that you offer. On the surface, your Zumba classes may not seem like one of your you know, biggest ministries that you have, but I will tell you that about eight years ago, I was headed towards a divorce and needed an outlet for my emotions. I found a Zumba class that was, located, that was uh, offered by a local church, and through that class, there was laughter, and there was movement, and there was acceptance, and I found fellow travelers. I also found quite a bit of healing during that time. In one of our enhanced living homes lives a man named TJ, who was interviewed by Cincinnati TV station after uh, staff helped uh, TJ celebrate his 70th birthday. Greg, that's my next slide. Uh, they asked uh, TJ what he wanted to do for his birthday, and he said that he wanted to jump out of a plane now, I will tell you, I do not understand people who want to jump out of a plane, right? Next year, I have a significant birthday that, yeah, right, you're shaking your head. I have a significant birthday that is coming up, and I will tell you that that is not on my list. <laughs> no, right? To how, I, I'm not doing that next year, I'm telling you. But <clears throat> in the interview that uh, the TV reporter did, T TJ described his journey while living with disabilities which included living in an institution when he was in Connecticut. These are his words that he used to tell his story. He said, I was labeled with mental retardation for a long time. I had a number, I mean, my number was 3328 and my sister's number was 3329 as we both lived in that institution. They said, I will not get anywhere where I wanted to go TJ said, sometimes you have to knock on the door and the door don't open, but I'm a bulldozer, so I knock down that door. <laughs> After leaving the institution, TJ became a very vocal advocate for persons with disabilities. If someone were to simply look at him as someone who lives in a group home, they would not truly understand his story. I think other people can do the same thing, TJ told the reporter, but they need support. When the reporter asked TJ what he wanted to do next, now that he had jumped out of a plane for his 70th birthday, he said, I want, to go, I want to get back involved into scuba diving, and I want to get more people involved, and I want to be a senator. <laughs> I will tell you, in today's volatile political climate, I am so tempted to write TJ in as a, as a write-in, right, whenever I go to vote. TJ has experienced and role modeled the most, uh, has role modeled the importance of walking with someone and helping to carry the load. This is one story of how staff embraces our residents for who they are, for what they've overcome, and for what they want to be. Verse three of the servant song reads, I will weep when you are weeping. When you laugh, I laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. As I read this verse, I thought of the grief share ministry that you have here at Abiding Christ. And I thought of the staff who work at Grace Works. Because many of the people that we serve are older adults, grief is something that we experience often. In our enhanced living homes, many of our residents have lived with us for decades. Residents and staff become like family. When a resident passes away, everyone in the hope, in the home, experiences grief. At GraceWorks, we are very blessed to have 230 employees who have been with the organization for 10 years or more. When you work together, that long staff become like family. 
One of those staff members is Crystal, who for many years worked in our life enrichment, on our life enrichment team at Bethany. They help plan activities for the residents at Bethany, helping to keep them engaged and such and active. Last month, Crystal celebrated 20 years with GraceWorks. Greg, if you'll put up my next slide. A couple of years ago, over 30 of Crystal's coworkers, including me, gathered in a conference room and we held hands to pray for Crystal and her family as they made the very difficult decision to remove their seven-year-old daughter, Ireland, from life support. Ireland had fought valiantly to overcome cancer and in the end was given the ultimate healing. For seven years, we walked the journey with Crystal, crying when she cried, smiling at pictures of Ireland when Crystal smiled. As I was preparing for this morning, looking at your website and the calendar of the ministries that you participate and offer in, perhaps the simplest connection that I saw was when you described the acolyte training that Caleb and Amelia and the first service I'm sure went through. On that banner, on that slide for the acolyte training, it simply said, serve God and spread his light. That's how our ministries come together as we serve God and help spread his light to others, as we hold out our hands and travel with one another, offering peace and hope, as we continually ask, will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you? Amen. <laughs> 